We left Kodachrome State Park and met up with a friend to spend the day at Bryce Canyon. Unfortunately, we only had one day for the park and it was definitely not enough time. I think I could spend three or four days there exploring the area and doing all the hikes. The park has one main road going south from the entrance to all of the panoramic viewpoints. Every view was so amazing and the colors of the different rocks against the trees was beautiful. Bryce is on the highest plateau along the Grand Staircase. At some viewpoints, you could even see the San Francisco peaks of Arizona and out to Four Corners. If you have the chance to go to Bryce, I recommend starting with the hikes if that's your thing. Uh, we stopped at the viewpoints first and did a couple of hikes, but we ran out of time before getting to some of the bigger ones. While the viewpoints are stunning to get panoramic views of Bryce Canyon, you'll want to do some hikes like the Navajo Loop to get down into the canyon and around these incredible hoodoos. Just by luck, we were there on the day of their centennial celebration, so the park was a little bit crowded. Unfortunately, we couldn't find a campsite outside of the commercial campgrounds around the park, so we ended up staying the night at a nice site called Red Rocks. The next morning, we left Bryce and headed west to our next stop, Capitol Reef National Park. I'm so glad we continued to take the scenic byway to get there. There were some really drastic changes in elevation and it seemed like every 30 minutes or so 
the landscape just completely changed. There were some parts of the drive that were on steep shelf roads, like the section lovingly called the Hogback. We passed through quite a few small towns, which was great since I have to stop for gas pretty often. It's a Jeep thing. After about a three hour drive, we arrived at Capitol Reef. Again, we only had about 24 hours here before continuing west to Colorado and definitely didn't get to experience everything the park has to offer. We were able to spend a little more time exploring here than in Bryce because we had already reserved a camping spot in the park for the night. We started by driving down the main road of the park. This was really similar to Bryce and it made it easy to see a fair amount of the park in a short period of time. The Grand Wash hike was incredible. The cliffs were so high, you had to look straight up to see the top. Um, and parts of it reminded me of the Narrows in Zion.
If you're an off-roader, I highly recommend taking some time to visit the area of the park north of the 24. Um, there are some campgrounds and trails up there that are only 4x4 accessible and would be awesome to stay at. Our site in the park was okay, but it was definitely crowded with some noisy RVs. amazing that this area has been home to people for so long. There are artifacts from hunter-gatherers moving through the canyons in 7000 BCE, along with petroglyphs dating back to 500 CE. There are also fruit orchards planted by the Mormon pioneers in the 1800s. The campground that we stayed at, Fruta, is actually surrounded by these orchards. Our last stop was just off the main road to see the Fremont culture petroglyphs. These date back to about 300 to 1300 CE. It's always incredible to me to see things like this and to think about what life would have been like back then. Early the next morning, we got back on the road. We had about a five hour drive ahead of us to get to Colorado and stopped at the incredible Goblin Valley State Park on our way over. We thought about passing by to save time, but I'm really glad we stopped. Check out next week's video to see that and what has to be my new favorite place on earth. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help support the channel. See you next week.